Now when talking about the Clone Wars, I find that most subjects revolve around the Republic and while I understand they're the good guys for the most part and they have numerous hours of content surrounding them, I think it's important to talk about their enemy, the Separatists. More specifically, the massive droid army and CIS fleets. So for today's video, we're going to talk about the three main starfighters found within their navy. We've discussed the capital ships and other various warships already, so I think it's important to look at the droid starfighters these ships often carried. Because throughout the numerous wars surrounding Star Wars, starfighters have been a major part of what makes up a navy and can turn the tide in many ways. The Clone Wars is no different and it saw some of the deadliest starfighters to have been created. Not just manned, but unmanned fighters. The first one we will look at is the Vulture Droid. I'd go out on a limb and confidently say that the Vulture Droid is easily the most recognizable starfighter used by the Separatist Navy, but it is also the least intelligent of the three we will be discussing. Now, that doesn't mean it can't successfully defeat enemy starfighters because what would be the point of using the Vulture Droid if that were the case? What I mean is that it is limited in its combat adaptability, being only programmed with a certain amount of flight patterns and engagement routines. However, the Zychar didn't develop this model with the idea of a perfect droid fighter. They wanted to create something that was incredibly efficient in its power output and overwhelmingly fast. They used advanced high energy power cells for both the engines and blasters. This form of power meant that assuming the droid wasn't obliterated already, it could return to the battleship it was assigned and recharge before returning to combat. These battleships, more often than not, were Luke or Holt class battleships, and they could carry a total of 1500 vulture droids. But it would be unlikely that all these droids would be launched at the same time. Instead, waves of vulture droids would be sent to overwhelm the enemy, just so when you think you've defeated all of them, another 100 swarm you and your wingman. But what about the specs of the starfighter? Like I said, the Zychar made them fast. Vulture droids could reach speeds of 1200 kilometers in atmosphere. Along with flat out speed, they were highly agile, being able to perform maneuvers that would crush or incapacitate an organic pilot. For weapons, they came armed with two twin blaster cannons, two energy torpedo launchers, and the option to carry buzz droid missiles, which when used properly could disable Republic starfighters and cause utter chaos within a squadron. They were roughly 7 meters in length when in flight mode, but could also transform into a sentry mode where they could stand roughly 4 meters tall. I didn't see much of a difference between the Legends version of this starfighter, although the armament of the Legends Vulture is instead 6 blaster cannons and concussion missile launchers with a capacity of 6 missiles. I would say the Vulture Droid is highly effective in its speed, armament, and size. It also won't break your starfighter budget either, but put it up against an equally large force and the limited capabilities start to show. The next starfighter is, well, more of a bomber, but could also be used in a dogfight, although I don't know why someone would use these already limited starfighters in that role. While the Hyena Bomber resembles the smaller Vulture Droid, it was manufactured by Bactoid Armor Workshop rather than the religiously mechanical Zychar. The Hyena design was inspired by the Vulture, but with an emphasis on carrying heavier payloads. The wings were also increased in width and made to be more sturdy, which gave it better atmospheric stability. They also made sure to better equip the hyena with heavier armor unlike the vulture droid counterpart. Its armament consisted of a quad laser cannon, missile pods with the capacity to hold 6 proton torpedoes and 6 concussion missiles, and its bomb chute which could carry 4 proton bombs which devastated enemy installations or heavy walkers. Like the vulture droid, the hyena was made to be very fast, especially for a bomber, reaching speeds of 1150 kilometers an hour. This speed made for quick, devastating strikes against Republic forces, while still having the ability to return to its docking rack rapidly, where it could be rearmed with additional proton bombs. While I personally love the unique designs of the hyena and vulture droids, they still committed some horrible acts of violence against the peoples of the Republic, oftentimes against innocent civilian villages or cities. But that's the reality of droid fighters. They're cold and lack any sort of complex emotion that might sway a living pilot from going along with horrible war crimes. However, no droid starfighter is more calculating than the final tinny we're discussing, the Tri-Fighter. While I scoured the database for information regarding the droid Tri-Fighter, two words came up in both canon and legends. Total destruction. 
While I discussed the Vulture Droid, I made mention of the lack of complexity in its programming, not to mention its limited range. The Tri-Fighter is held back by neither of these traits. Its droid brain is highly intelligent, able to analyze, anticipate, and even go as far as mimic clone pilots' attack strategies. Meaning pilots could no longer predict the patterns and movements like they were able to do with Vulture Droids. Along with its intelligence, the control and communications transceiver was far more powerful, allowing for the Tri-Fighter to venture further away from its control ship. Now, when I say control ship, I just mean the vessel that is coordinating the CIS attack. These droids still needed information relayed to them on positioning similar to a standard pilot in their squadron. Enough about how smart this Starfighter is. What makes its design and weapons so deadly? The center of the Starfighter contained the droid brain and its menacing red photoreceptors and protruding from the face, a single heavy laser cannon. Surrounding its spherical center was its three arms, which worked to stabilize the droid when flying in atmosphere. Each arm possessed a single light laser cannon capable of rapid fire. It gets better because on the arms of these tri-fighters were two to six missiles of various payloads, either concussion missiles or the frustrating buzz droids which just love to dismantle or breach Republic starfighters. Three independent thrusters propelled the Tri-Fighter to incredible speeds, not quite as fast as the Vulture droid, but fast enough. Thrusters also allowed for quick maneuvering in a dogfight. It's easy to see why this CIS droid Starfighter quickly became the bane of the clone Starfighter core, especially against the ARC-170, V-19, and Y-Wing bomber. The only real threat to the Tri-Fighter came from the Jedi piloting the ETA-2 Actus-class interceptors. While you could say the introduction of the Alpha-3 Nimbus-class V-Wing improved the odds of a clone pilot, the reality is that the V-Wing was introduced near the end of the Clone Wars, seeing little combat against the CIS Navy. The V-Wing saw more of a career flying for the Empire, although that was short-lived due to the introduction of the TIE line of Starfighters. But to get back on topic, the Tri-Fighter remains one of the deadliest and most advanced droid Starfighters to have ever been produced. It's beyond the capabilities of most average clone pilots and even some Jedi Knights. For many, the final thing you may see, or not see at all, is a droid designed to look like the ferocious and terrifying prehistoric skull of a predator, found on Call of Four. The droid starfighters of the CIS Navy were made for one purpose, the annihilation of the Grand Army pilots who fought to protect a corrupt republic. Now that you know more than you should about these droids, let me know which one is your favorite. Is it the Vulture Droid, the Hyena, or the Tri-Fighter? How do you think things would have played out if these droids were never shut down and the CIS Navy continued to carve a path towards the Republic? If you want to support the channel, feel free to subscribe and share. Why not like the video too if you feel so generous? Have an amazing day, long live the Confederacy of Independent Systems, and of course, may the Force be with you.